I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First of all, visit your approval of minutes. I've read them in the building and they're fine. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in that unanimous. Okay, next one is IDA 58 Glenwood Street. Okay, so since our last meeting, I've been in touch with um, DCR, the hazard mitigation department that, um, let me just find the plan here, that handles floodplain issues for the state. And they, don't believe that the deck violates any of the flood insurance program um, standards and that it's not a, uh, an issue for the building code. So with that said, they told me to contact DEP to make sure DEP in this region agreed that um, there would be no impact to the floodway. Um, so I got in touch with DEP and they confirmed that they would not see this as increasing the lateral extent of flooding or um, you know, causing a change in the velocity or any of those sorts of things. So, that being said, I think the project as proposed is approvable. Um, it's outside the 50 foot no build zone, um, although the fence does require a waiver um, because it's right at the edge of BBW, that is the maintained yard and has been for the existence of the house. So I recommend granting the waiver. I do recommend that um, their uh, wetland markers go on the fence and that um, the fence along the river be six inches off the ground to allow for passage of things. Any questions, Jeff? Yeah? I have no questions with regard to the project at all. I, I, didn't we uh, grant the waiver at the last meeting on the fence? Didn't we already grant a waiver? I'm happy to do it again, but I thought we did that. We did. Okay, I haven't written up the minutes from the last meeting, so. No, sure um, if you want me to do it again, it's no problem. I'm happy nope, to do if it you just remember sure that, that we did. I don't want them to have any problems after this meeting, so. <laughs> I'll just say I already wrote waiver granted. Thank you, thank you. All set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, no questions? No questions. Motion. Uh, I'll, I'll move that we uh, app uh, approve the proposal with a negative two for work in resource area B. BLSF and a negative three for work in buffer zone. Uh, as stated, the waiver has already been granted for the fence. And uh, that's my motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, So that would be with the six, the fence along the water, six inches off the ground and markers on the fence, yeah. as, as stated. Okay. All right, so I'll write that up and you'll get that in the mail, unless you want to come pick it up. We can. Okay, we'll, we'll let you know then. Thank, Thank you. you. Next one is uh, 141 Park So this is a new filing. Um, this is at the end of Autranav, where you might remember some time ago, the DPW had to redo the outfall there because there was serious erosion and even brought in the specialist from Vermont or something and put in all that stone because of the velocity of the water. Not that that has anything to do with this project. <laughs> but the um, proposal is to take what was an existing deck and turn that into a three season porch and then two sets of the and then um, add a deck onto the back of the three season porch and the house. Um, the sauna tubes for the new deck would be outside of the buffer zone and the new deck would con connect to the three season porch which is in the 50 foot no build zone but there was an existing deck there as you can sort of see from the photos. Unfortunately the contractor removed the deck and already installed some new footings which you can also see in the photos. Um, 
I believe that everything is in the correct location and um, the homeowner was unaware that what the contractor had done was was not allowed either by building or conservation. That said, I, I don't think there's any harm at this point and I would confirm in the field that the sonotubes were in the right location before any further construction move forward. Yeah. How, did, how did we find out that the work had begun without a, uh, a, an RDA? I, well, I do a site visit to every project to take photos, to confirm the wetland line. So I just went out there for that purpose and met with the homeowner. She, she was there. Um, like I said, she was completely helpful and cooperative, but, but had no idea that that wasn't supposed to happen. She's here. <laughs> Hi. So the contractor started before the the building permit was a, finally approved. Yeah, there is no building permit. That's really what my copy for us. Okay. But it wasn't the applicant's fault. Right. And I let the applicant know her contractor should definitely have have known better. Is the contractor here. Yes. So that's been torn down. How are you doing? Yes, yeah, you come forward. It's a rebuild. So what they're saying here. If you, if you don't mind, just for a minute, to have a seat. Then. Tell us who you are and I tell know. us what happened and, and how it happened and why. I'm Vincent Brandolini, and um, the, the, is that the name of your company? It's Brandolini Construction. Brandolini Construction. Okay. So, so what ha what happened, sir? What happened? I mean, I've been trying to push this along. We started this probably back in I don't know March, and um, I'm behind schedule, so. When I went the last time I went down to the city, they were saying, telling me how, where the deck is existing, I won't have a problem. And as long as the footings are outside the buffer, it should be approved and I shouldn't have an issue. And I'm so far behind schedule, the homeowner has something at the end of the month. I was trying to kind of just get a jump start and I should have waited, but I installed some of the footings where the new deck location is going to be and just pulled the old deck down which is totally rotten off the house well, what about uh, are you a licensed builder yes so, so building permit never crossed your mind or? no I've, I've already put in for the building permit but i had to wait until we went to this meeting was your application pending when you did the work at the house or did, did you the application i put in but they said that we had to go to this meeting and this has been ongoing for yeah. probably four months now and we were already supposed to have it done okay so, so when i was down at the city they said you, you're not going to have a problem most likely because there's an existing deck there putting that room over there the only thing we really have to get approved is adding the new deck to the back and just with me being so far behind and needing to meet the end of the month i kind of jumped the gun a little but so just so i understand the chronology you applied for a building permit correct but the building permit didn't get issued because conservation hadn't signed off yet correct and you got to jump that ahead of the permit let alone conservation how long you been building? Um, I mean, I just asking because probably ten years now. Yeah, so you know better, right? Yeah, I shouldn't have touched it. I should have waited. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you for your. I appreciate your candor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
whoever took the pride of death gifts on the Jews weren't halfway down and they didn't have the right support. Doesn't need to show up in that picture. Yeah. I don't see any tool today. Right. Well, does that require a waiver now? Does, does, does that require a waiver? It's within the 50 foot no build zone. There um, were supports there. I don't know. I mean, I think we've allowed reconstruction of existing decks in the 50 foot um, without a waiver. I just asked the question. It well, either my, it does or it doesn't. My, my, my opinion would be that it doesn't only because there wasn't. I don't have a pro I would just want to make sure I don't have a problem with no, it no, being there. Yeah, no, that's why I'm, 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 that's why I'm telling you it's strictly my opinion on this. It, 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 where there was a structure there, my opinion would be that a waiver would not be required. If there were nothing there and we were starting from absolute scratch, I would, I would agree that a waiver would be proven. It's going to be in the same footprint. It appears. Exactly. Same exactly. dimensions. Exactly. That's my understanding. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing. I mean, okay. the, the old deck was actually starting to sink down into the dirt because the whole footing was worked. No, no, I, I, okay, I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, they say I don't have a problem with this location. I just want to make sure that uh, the dot, the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, so yeah, that it doesn't create a problem. Whatsoever. All right. Okay, that's that's all I have really. Okay. Um, there's one more question. The motion. Uh, just a comment. It looks like there's you know that the picture on the screen is a lot clearer than than the one that we got um, on paper, and it looks like there's a good amount of disturbance um, within the 50 foot. Um, the old deck actually ran down and was sitting in the soil, and all that soil was under there. Like that soil didn't, that sat up higher than everything else. Yeah, I, I, just just to finish my thought, um, I think that uh, one of our conditions, you know, for if we do grant uh, a negative on this, that uh, one of our conditions should be um, erosion control uh, for around. Especially that line. I think uh, I put that in the, the other. recommendations. What would you guys recommend like a small retaining wall with some gravel behind it? Or? No, no, no. Just a um, biodegradable silt sock while okay. you're doing the construction. Yeah. Yep. You guys don't want anything there afterwards to stop any washout that may get under there. Or? I think. I mean, if it didn't wash out before, I don't think it's going to start washing out now. If you want to put some gravel under there, that okay. might be a good idea. Well, it calls for a pre and post. We, we, right? we, we don't want to condition something that's not necessary. However, if, 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 uh, if that's a concern, or let's say you start construction and you notice there is soil migration, it would be a good idea on your part to get ahead of it and put some... Uh, some uh, some hay bales or something right. to stop that soil migration before it becomes yeah, no, an issue. Yeah, we're requiring that. Well, the plan calls for erosion control. Oh, so that, yeah. All right, beautiful. All right. I think... Uh, I'm putting more dirt. I, I would tend to uh, lean to the question. Is the deck going to be on? Is it going to be elevated or down below? Yeah. I mean, I would put, put question on that. That's what I was had in mind, just yeah. to stop anything from moving yeah. when we're finished. Okay. So, Mr. Brandolini, just before we make the motion, you only dodge the bullet once here, okay? Yeah. Right. Uh, what are you looking for, Jen? Uh, it's all there. I don't, I'm on the wrong page. I brought the three. three. Yeah, I do need that, please. And pre and post. And just trying to pre and post, over. erosion control, and wetland markers. A negative, Thank three you. With, uh, a negative three with conditions for erosion control, biodegradable 12 inch silt sock. Pre and post construction inspection and wetland markers. And crushed stone under the deck. And crushed stone under the deck. You can consider that the motion. Second. Do you want any amendments to that? Or are you happy with that? Nope. Thank you. Yeah. I think we're at the limit of three. All right. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then Chambers. Great. And, and no starting until you get the build, yeah, building we'll, permit, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll write that up, and then you can come in and get your building permit. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to use a drone. Apologize. We're going to use a drone to spy on you. So don't. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. So this, we have uh, memories like elephants. <laughs> well, some of us. Thank yeah, you. Right. Once that's fine. Thank you very much. Right, good have good a good night. Night. All right, Next one is. Uh, Flood, uh, 
What is it? Oh, I want to walk again. So the proposal here is for <coughs> seems like the final plan. It's funny they don't have a plan showing the okay. sewer line other than this thing here. At that scale, you can't tell anything. No, she said no. She said no. Oh, National Grid has a um, Nothing truck wash station inside their maintenance building. Um, currently, it recycles water. Is. I have seen. That. They want to connect that to the sanitary sewer, which is on site. Um, Largely work in this type of work in pavement is exempt under the Rivers Protection Act and also exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, it is local bylaw jurisdictional for the buffer zone. Um, that's the in pavement stuff. For some reason, DEP didn't see fit to grant the waiver to anything that occurs outside of pavement. So they have 17 feet of work um, in the lawn. <laughs> That's the brief summary, but I'm sure you can. Do you have the green? Oh, you do. I do have green cards. I'll take this. Um, for the record, I'm Tracy Dewar of Conoco Engineers. So I'm here on behalf of Ness Electric, and they're seeking to connect their their wash um, their wash station and the maintenance building to their existing sewer. It's a total of 230 feet of pipe. All but 17 of it is in the existing paved access drive, and the last 17 is in like a maintained lawn area, so it's already been disturbed. Um, it does include a thousand gallon uh, oil water separator, and uh, we're seeking negative determination with the police uh, controls. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Just, just for orientation, I think I know where this is. Is that the main road coming off of 114 that's running sort of diagonally? Yeah, if you come in from Turnpike Street, you're coming yeah. from the top right, and then the maintenance building's on your left. Okay. Right after you come through the gate. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so Boston Brook runs. Yeah, it's not way in right. the back or the two larger buildings. Actually, that isn't Boston Brook. That's that no-name brook where they did the slip lining of the culvert. Mm -hmm. Is that done? But yeah, yes, but they're monitoring plantings, which hopefully are getting Got some it. water. Got it. <laughs> okay, you show erosion control. Um, yep. Is that a dewatering station? That square with the erosion control around? What? No, that's uh, a, it's just around the catch base and inlet protection. Okay. No other questions. Yeah. I have none, no questions. Um, how how deep is the pipe going? The existing man actually had a profile on there because they had questions after testing the equipment and out from the driveway. So the existing sewer manhole, we're going in 219, it's coming out of the wash at 223, so it's about two feet below grade and then it drops about four feet over the run. So about six feet total. So we shouldn't hit, we shouldn't hit water. We shouldn't hit water. No, like I said, I did a few factor test pits where Brown water was encountered with me. I'm sure we stayed above it. Okay. Uh, no questions. Motion. What are you looking about, John? Negative determination. Uh, I move we issue a negative two to work in room front, negative three to work in buffer. And uh, erosion controls are shown on the plan uh, pre and post construction inspections. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, just one quick thing. Um, Tim Millette drafted up the application, but he says we need to sign it. Yeah, I can sign it. Obviously, you can't start till you get your determination. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Sixteen eighty five and two four two sixteen eighty four. Oh, okay. Thanks. 
Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Dave Gordon with Peer Consultants. I'm a certified wellness scientist, certified professional soil scientist, a 12 year member of the Massachusetts Conservation Commission, as well as a former director on the State Board of Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. Here today to uh, present two projects for replacement of culprits beneath railroad trucks. And uh, what I thought I'd do first is, I know my colleague was here last time to speak to you about this project, but I just wanted to give you some brief history about this, these types of projects. Since um, December of 2014, Peer Consultants, working under Keolis, has uh, successfully permitted and installed 12 of these projects in various towns. So they include two in Franklin under NOI, three in Lemonster under the RDA, two in Lincoln under NOI, two emergency certificates because of the severity of the culverts in West and Plymouth, and then one each in Natick, Franklin, uh, Wilmington, and Ulrica. Currently this year, we are uh, in the process, we have we just uh, received an RDA in Lincoln, uh, we received a NOI an order of conditions in Franklin, we're here before you for two in North Andover, and uh, next week I'm going to uh, back to Weston for another culvert to uh, get that open permit. Since I know Jen was out to the site briefly to take a look at it, and um, obviously I've been out there as well, but I thought what I'd do first is just to do a little background about the two culverts as well as some cool pictures just to pass around quickly here. I have uh, a friend here who has built for the um, railroad, this part of the railroad as well as the culverts, and the date where the railroad first went through this area was June 30th, 1914, and the asphalt was last updated in 1975. Based on the asphalt here, uh, they actually clearly identify the two culverts on the property as um, cattle crossings, if you will. And uh, on May 25th, 1949, BM Railroad conveyed to the city of Lawrence uh, portions that you now see as a sort of stilling basin next to the uh, cattle area. I have a picture too to show you within the report, which actually shows both the current view of uh, this area with the, the Lawrence Sanitary District wastewater treatment plant at the top, as well as back in 1938, where you can uh, see the grazing area that the uh, original owner would use these two areas to bring and bring their cattle through the, um, the crossings. So just like uh, starting off with, uh, this is the 2809. This uh, first picture shows the upgrading location. This is a 24 inch RCP pipe coming out of the hillside, which stems from the greater Real Lawrence Sanitary District facility, it catches catch basins, materials on their property, conveys it downhill through this 24 inch pipe and uh, essentially through this former cattle crossing. I've outlined in black here, uh, it's pretty cool this, the, where the 24 inch culvert comes out or 24 inch RCP comes out. Essentially it's concrete four feet high all around this entire uh, corridor before it goes back under the, um, the uh, railroad tracks. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So your colleague made this presentation previously with photographs and everything. Is there something different tonight that you're going to tell us that we didn't hear at the last hearing? Yes, unfortunately um, I was stuck on a ship in the Caribbean. Uh -huh. So I really want to present this in front of you uh, as I've been doing for the past um, uh, years. So you're going to give us different information than he gave us? I'm going to give you uh, perhaps similar information, but uh, presented from a wetland natural resource perspective as opposed to an engineering perspective, which he was here. Right. Uh, the second picture is shows the 24 inch RCP coming out of the hillside, as well as the four foot, um, four foot um, concrete block that captures, basically conveys, keeps all the water. Yeah. Uh, once again, 2009, just the rusted corroded rail top that we're hoping to replace as part of this project. And the other thing that's failing on this, the, other, the thing you should know about these culverts is the MBTA mandates that heal this identify at least six of these per year. In fact, there's thousands in the system that could go for replacement. The MBTA mandates that six get replaced per year that are deemed during the inspection process to be failed or replaced. And uh, the actual replacement of these culverts, you think it's be like weeks and months, but it's actually during only a 17-hour period over one weekend. So on a Friday night, they closed on the tracks at midnight, 
last, or, or last train. And by Saturday afternoon, the new culvert is installed. Trains are, um, they finish things up on Sunday. Trains are operating again on Monday. This is to prevent any type of loss of wage for local residents who take the train or any type of busing operations. Uh, this is uh, also the edge of the, the uh, culvert that is failing with the concrete. And a view of the Merrimack River from the culvert area. And then uh, for 2820, which is next, I just wanted to show you the inside of 2820, which shows uh, graffiti. It's about 49 inches wide in there. And uh, the bottom of the culvert is also, asphalt's all broken up, and um, we're having some, some materials go through. And then one of the questions you had last time was about wildlife passage here. This is a view looking at the culvert, and uh, as you can see, the vegetation is very thick there, and there's actually no view of the culvert. This was right when the, right before the, the leaves came on, so it's likely even more not visible during this time of year. And this is the uh, not visible to whom? For, for well, for me at least, but you know, as as animals may be walking up towards there. Because as you pointed out in your opening, these these have been here since 1914, like. Uh, the railroad track has been there since the, the, These cattle crossings were, were the, cause the, the, the two that we had questions on were the, were the full-size cattle crossings, the, right. the, 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 the one that you just showed with graffiti and another one. Those are the ones that we really had questions on. Sure, that's what, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about. So those aren't visible to? Not at all. To go to the um, kids with the spray cans found. Them. Well, that's that's going to go. Obviously, we find lots of. Uh, well, if the kids found them, the animals will find the them. Animals, the animals, the animals have got to have better senses to find things and, than kids with spray cans. And lastly, and yeah, for that set, it's a um, just a view from the to the river at that point. And the idea of this uh, cross replacement is we really want to avoid a situation of a passenger train through Emmett like this one. Um, right next to the river, or you know, even worse, I'm sure you've seen these a lot, you know, where we, this line has other types of materials going down the side, it's just passing trains so we want to avoid any type of failure of this culvert. Did, 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 he, did your colleague convey any of the questions we asked? Yes, in fact, I'm gonna to get to that just next. Okay. So, um, and I guess that's one last photo for you to look at. So this is uh, from historicalaerials.com, and the first image is just uh, showing you based on these two X's where the, the uh, cattle crossings are in the Lawrence Sanitary District. And then uh, the next photo is from the same area from uh, 1938, and the two X's are in the same location based on the sure. imagery, so. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I have the, since you presented it to them, I need it for their public records sure. document. Sure. Um, do you need these back? Because I wrote on them. I Like, if you submit it to me, I have to include it in our packet for public meeting, okay. open meeting law requirements. So they become if, you, if you want them back, I, I would need copies. Okay. I wrote on them because I numbered them. So... Uh, so based on uh, the two summary questions that, that Jen provided me via email, were, uh, I would be more able to answer any other questions you have as well, but essentially the uh, commission was concerned that um, the replacement of the large box covers with the smaller concrete covers will result in a restriction of flood waters. So the, these, these culverts occur at the upper reach of the flood zone, 32 foot. The um, upstream side of the culvert, if you will, is this box enclosure, concrete four feet high, receiving that 24 inch RCP go over catch basins at a time at the Lawrence Sanitary District. The uh, actual material, so we are taking off the um, rail top, which is filled, as well as the southern side of the existing concrete to replace it with the RCP pipe. The reason why we use the class five RCP is because it's a really stronger structural component. 
I thought about, we, we thought about as a team to just replacing the rail tunnel. And not a st strong structural component, according to the uh, Kiowas, but also the fact that any type of change like that, to, to install a structure like that, requires more uh, time to have the material set. And uh, their fear is that when they need to get the trains back online by Monday morning, that this material wouldn't be set enough, which would cause not only uh, financial delays, financial costs for the uh, Kielos operating because they have to bus people, but also potentially lost time and wages for people trying to take the trains uh, where they have to bus and may lose time day to work. So the, the actual loss of um, floodplain, if you will, is, I think it was three, um, well, it, it amounts to a seven by seven by seven foot box. So I'm six foot high, so you know, seven feet by seven feet by seven feet per culvert is what we're losing for floodplain storage at the highest limits of this area. We know this isn't a Merrimack River. There is, a, you know, it's huge. There's many floodplains both upstream and downstream of the river. In addition, the culverts are perpendicular to the river. So potentially as flood water is traveling down the river, we have this small little existing opening where you know, flood waters may not be more apt to flow into it because it's, it is a confined area already. Um, and the other part of that was that the, the capacity of the 24 inch pipe that heads up upgrading also has storage capacity <coughs> for flood storage. Uh, the Commission also wanted to know whether the, it was possible to repair the existing culvert or installing a reinforcing box around the culvert. Uh, not possible to repair in this situation because of the time that they want to get things back active, as well as the unknowns whether it would be structurally sound. Like I said, they prefer the Class 5 RCP at these locations. As far as putting a structure around the existing culvert, um, we need a minimum clearance distance above between the, the rail tracks, the ballast, and the rail ties, and so putting anything above that to support the decaying uh, rail bed, decaying on the rail top, wouldn't be feasible because we still need to dig down to get that clearance distance to have that other packing material. I don't think I don't think we were looking for sleeving it on the outside. I think it was more that we were interested in sleeving it on the inside. In a sense, we are sleeving it with the five, the class five RCP. But you're reducing the, the size by more than fifty percent. Correct. And, and as you, and, as you and, can see, the twenty-four inch. There's only a twenty-four inch RCP catch basin that feeds into it. So as far as potential flow from the catch basins upstream. What about flow coming the other way from the from the river flooding? Right. Well, well, that's the that's way. the flood issue that you raised. Is the if the Merrimack floods over, where does the floodplain extend to the other side of the tracks? To just the 32 foot line, which I can either show up here or my visuals. The tracks are 33, though, I think. Right. So the, 30, the 32 is really just covering uh, a little bit on the other side of the tracks within the confines of that concrete box. Uh, so let's see. So the 32 line is in pink there, which doesn't show flow. The, 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 that, uh, so that's on the. Um, that the floodplain line. Right. So the 30, the pink line is a 32 foot line for the the, at the extent of the floodplain on the side. It's at the top of the culvert. That's at the top of the culvert. So it's these. Just under the rail then. That's what was in my concern. It's hard to read so the, the, the contours so on this. So it's what? It's 72 by 72 right now, right? No, the size of the existing? Yeah. yeah both, they're very clean. Which one are talking about? They vary. You get the, um, Mr. Chairman, what I'm hearing, and he's the second person to say it, what I'm hearing is they're not giving me an engineering reason why they can reduce the size by 50%. They're giving me a customer service. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what you're dwelling on. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing uh, it's more expensive and it's going to cause a customer service problem. I'm not hearing the science, and that's what we asked your colleague for. And no disrespect, but I'm not, the answer you just gave me is just not a good answer. We're, 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 our issue here is wetlands. Uh, so we're, we're not insensitive, but we don't consider those other factors. Right, so I agree with Whether it costs you more 
or, or whether you have to put more time into it, quite frankly, is your problem. Well, there are no wetlands here. We're just talking about floodplain, and we're talking about river front area. Oh, okay. So for the, for the floodplain area, we are, are looking at, uh, like I said, a suspect loss of around, I think it was whatever, sometimes 77, so around 367 cubic feet, which compared to the overall acre, well, we measure floodplain storage in acres. But so looking at point zero. So yeah, but you're, you're indicating the floodplain goes to elevation 32. Correct. Okay, now the elevation's up here. Now I assume this is the riverside of the plan. Uh, which one are you looking at? This, this, this. If that's the riverside. Nope, that's the riverside. This is the riverside. It's up to 32, okay. Right. Let me see what the... So the elevations on this side, the upstream side, are lower than 32. Right, but right here we have the fence that heads up the hill, which we our survey stopped at the fence. It stopped here, but the, well, where's the floodplain end? The and it's got to end up here somewhere. The, uh, so the point is that the water, that the existing box culvert that's there, is going to allow water to come through from the river much more easily than uh, the pipe that you're replacing. It's going to handle it a lot quicker and disperse it on the other side into the floodplain. And the problem is, you may, you may have, it may have, a, now it may be a minor effect, but there, the effect could be to raise the flood elevation above the 32, possibly. But it may go 32.1 or something like that. All I mean. Remember, we're talking about the also the hundred year flood, so the hundred year flood. Yeah. We're looking at a, a, yeah, a hundred cubic feet total per cover. In general, they talk about flood storage in acres feet. So our, if you will, um, elimination of 376 cubic feet each is, is I think it's like 0 0.01 or 0.01 percent. So you're arguing that it's de minimis? Compared to the entire oh, the I, I get it, I got it, I got it. Um, I, I guess, let me put it this way. You know, we, we do have jurisdiction over the, um, over the flood plain, over the Merrimack River in North Andover. Um, some of the standards were, asking for is uh, to justify that the uh, compensatory flood storage is not impaired and, and you're, you're arguing that you know with a comparative volume you know compared to what is normally considered standard all right um, and we're, we're also asking asking you to hold to the standard of not restricting the flood waters with, within that flood zone, okay? It, it looks by the project that it's severely restricting, okay? So, uh, uh, you know, and, and what Al is asking for is some engineering, um, and, uh, you know, a solid engineering argument that, that says it's not restricting and here is why, okay? Um, so, so, the, so, so if we to, to talk about arguments over, you know, or talk about factors of the project that involve, uh, you know, you can't finish it over a weekend, or you, or you, you know, you, you, you wouldn't want to run a train over it if it's if the concrete's still setting, all that stuff. Those are all valid arguments, but not for this forum. So let's look at the let's look at uh, putting it back in the same width, which is a. Um, Class five, class six foot pipe. Uh, to maintain the same open area as we have now, huh? why why would that not be considered? Let, let's look at that. So um, let's give a six foot pipe as an example. That, and, um, that gives us uh, all six feet, <laughs> both width and uh, height, obviously. So what that would mean is that to get that six foot pipe in there, you'd have to remove both sides of the existing. Um, I get that, and, and that's that's kind of my point. My well, the point big, is biggest, well, what I'm hearing, your biggest objection to doing what, something other than what you've shown is the time delay it's going to cause you, and the interference it's going to cause to to be able to run the tra trains over the tracks in the, in the uh, interruption with your customers. Nope, that's that's what, what I'm hearing. That's uh, not what I'm, uh, I'm saying here. What I'm saying is we're just giving a quick example here about a six-foot pipe. And uh, 
if we were to install a six foot pipe RCP at this location to sort of maximize the same type of flow, uh, what that would mean is we have to excavate out, we have more disturbance within our riverfront, we have more disturbance within the floodplain to start. The six foot pipe requires three foot, at least half of clearance above the six foot pipe for the ballast, the rail ties, and uh, the rail itself, and all the substrate that goes above that. So we would need a nine foot cut at that location. So we would then have additional disturbance below that would be cut out nine feet. But with the existing elevation, with the existing structure on the northern, on the um, upgrading side, if you will, at the hillside, that would mean we'd also have to cut that down and essentially um, increase that disturbance as well. So any type of larger pipe using our class five RCP <coughs> would have additional natural resource impacts within this area. But, but the question we're asking you to answer is, are you not restricting the flow of floodwaters through these two culverts? Well, it seems that, that's the standard. It seems to me, you know, that the smaller pipe is going to allow less water to flow through. It's going to flow through it at a lesser rate. If you get the hundred-year flood, which is going to come through, then which is going to increase the flood level on the riverside somewhat. And then, uh, you know, I don't know how much storage is on the upstream side of it because you don't indicate that on the your plan isn't large enough in scope to indicate where the floodplain is and how much on the on the upstream side of the tracks the floodplain occupies and whether or not the uh, the let me see the floodplain on the upstream side is going to be the water is going to get there by going through these culverts it's not going to get there by the tracks because they're too high so if these are only two openings there, now there's a floodplain on the upstream side. I don't know how large it is. And because you don't have to give any documentation to show how large it is, and what effect putting a smaller pipe in would have on that floodplain and on the elevation on the downstream side, if any. Now, it may be that the, the difference is minute. If that is the case, then it's probably not an issue. And that's what the first question about the, uh, the performance standards asks the issuing authority. It says, uh, you know, shall compensatory storage be provided for all flood storage volume that will be lost? Uh, when in the judgment of the issuing authority said loss will cause an increase or will contribute incrementally to an increase in the horizontal extent and level of flood waters during peak flows. Uh, our, my verbal sort of argument or discussion with you is that you know, from a sort of straight face point of view, this minimal cubic foot loss compared to the acres of foot within the Merrimack River flood storage area. Yeah, but it, 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 it's so not just the volume of the culvert that we're concerned with. It's the ability of that culvert to pass water and allow it to go through easily and quickly and unimpaired so that it doesn't affect the floodplain on the downstream side as far as its elevation is concerned because it can get through there a lot quicker and it can spread out at lower elevations and that can ease the elevation of the floodplain. Now, if you restrict it so it can't get through, you have an effect on the elevation of the floodplain on the downstream side, which may raise it against the tracks. And, and uh, it may be an immaterial amount, but there's nothing to, sh to indicate to us that that's the case. And I think the question's been asked is, what is the effect? In and fact, what's the cumulative effect? Because you, we're talking about two two culverts just here well, and not two. the end of them. Yeah, it's two that allow it in. Now, I don't know if those are the only two. That's what I'm saying. Or, we don't or what? The, because we don't have the extent of There's a lot of information we don't have. There's and many, many other culverts right along the system, both actually with rivers or streams uh, that, have, that are coming off the hill from actual wetland systems. That, uh, no, we're talking about that, that impact the river. We're not talking about what's coming off the hill. Right, that's what I mean. That are coming that go from the hill down to the river yeah. and vice versa. Uh, I'd just like to make a suggestion, if I could, sure. Mr. Chairman. Um, it, you know, it, I mean, it, it's obviously not a clear, cut and dried issue, but um, I, I think it might might be helpful if you could provide 
to us a written justification of how you uh, of uh, how the project satisfies the performance standards that Jen has asked you to satisfy. And that was in the notice of intent. Well, we're looking for an alternatives analysis. You're, you're, you're giving us one alternative. You're telling us that there's one. They, I, they did I an alternatives analysis. I don't know that. Is that it, the, it, the, um, the, the alternatives analysis that calls for one to reduce the size by 50 percent? Might well, see. The, the well, for the turned out analysis, we're talking about the river factor. Yeah. And so, for speaking about the alternatives within the river front, our understanding is how can you not, what can you do to not do work within the river front? So generally, our alternatives analysis uh, are, are three items, which is one, do nothing. You know, let, let the color stay as is. Two is just maintenance type repairs, which would have minimal impact. And the third one being the full replacement. Uh, we've been asked before, well, you know, why don't, uh, can you put in a bridge there instead, you know, a big span bridge or something to that effect? And within the reference, as an alternatives analysis, well, that, bridge would still have impact within the riverfront, and our alternatives analysis to that bridge would still be do nothing, do maintenance, or put in, let's say, a bridge. So Not to mention, my contention is that this isn't an alternatives analysis situation because this is redevelopment. This is an existing structure being replaced by another structure. Yeah. The only standard which you need to meet under Section 10.585 is an improvement to and, the, to and the what, system. What's the improvement? I was, I was just going to go there with that under 10.58. Under in parentheses five, uh, you're under, under your application, you are required uh, to improvement to existing conditions, and uh, I haven't yet been convinced of an improvement. I also would like to note that DEP has not yet um, answered, and um, I really think we're kind of flying blind here without having a comment from DEP as well. They may not comment. It, yeah. It's not well, required of them, but, but the, we, we don't know. It's under my, review. My final question, and then I'll clam up. What about Lisa Eggleston? Is this appropriate? Is this something that would be appropriate for her to look at upon? No, I, I, this isn't a this isn't a stormwater issue. If I mean, if you wanted outside review of this, you would go to someone like you did with the slip lining at National Grid. Someone who's going to assess it for its performance standards according to the Act, not in accordance with um, stormwater. I think that's something we should consider. Uh, while we wait for DEP, and I agree. Like I said, I, I still have an issue with this pipe being cut down. Yeah, well, that's 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 where we're always struggling with that, all of us. You know, and, and I don't understand. Now, when you say when you put the, the 48 inch pipe in, you're still going to tear away from the tracks and work on the top? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All work gets done. So, the, so why would why can't you do get the six foot pipe, a six foot box cover it in there? And, and putting in because you're going to do the top anyways. Uh, six, first of all, the six foot box covers will still have the requirements of coverage on the top as far as clearance distances. Uh, they don't. You they only use uh, class five RCPs in this situation because the box covers are uh, require more time to have it set and stabilize. I know that's not an issue for natural resources, but it's, it's an issue for making sure this is stable after the fact and doesn't fail. In addition, since the size of this box cover that would be necessary. Um, you know, may necessitate that an entire wheel system for the train may actually fit on top of it. In that case, the box may not be just one box, it may be two separate boxes or three separate boxes. And you have to you know, measure it out to be as uh, the quick part of the size, which we haven't done in this situation. As far as uh, DEP goes, they have said to me on previous projects uh, that, and I'm sure you've heard this too, is that, well, in, for this case, in, in the the review of these covers for previous ones, they've said to me, uh, well, I'll paraphrase, it's more like, you know, is this gonna be any different than the last one? And so they haven't reviewed it or haven't commented on it. But they also indicated that they haven't, don't have time. There's a lot of projects you'll see in the system that are still under review, projects that are two to three months old, so. They did say, this doesn't pertain to this project, but that they are subject to stream crossing standards. So you could be required to use a box in a different situation. This isn't a perennial stream or even an intermittent stream. So there are no stream crossing standards to comply with. But you had mentioned at one point that you always use these because that's the standard. But DEP clearly said that if this were a stream, this would not be an option. Um, so you must have alternatives that you use in different situations. It depends on what's going to happen crossing standards for not this situation but other projects that we've looked at um, you know, 
to meet all the stream crossing standards. I guess I was giving an example for um, what a box cover might look like. Uh, another situation it ended up being like 20 feet wide by four feet tall. And in that case, anything larger than 10 feet is considered a bridge, which has more implications with the Federal Railroad Authority and larger um, issues for getting that done. So, but you asked a question about redevelopment standards, and we, um, we filed this under the uh, Basic Riverfront Act 10584 because um, that's actually a more stringent standard. But uh, for the benefit of Jennifer, when she talked to me about it, I have gone through the analysis to look at the redevelopment standards. And um, being a former cattle crossing, you know, we didn't consider this area to be redevelopment. While it is true that there is a degraded area, you could consider things without topsoil, so it doesn't have topsoil there. We don't have topsoil for the ballast. We don't have topsoil under the rails. We don't have topsoil under the uh, railroad ties. The concrete system itself doesn't have topsoil. Interestingly enough, uh, being a river system and having a lot of alluvia in there, the new sand from the river also does not have topsoil. Uh, so we looked at the re redevelopment standards. And, uh, so you, it, is it a redevelopment or not? We, we are not going to. You you're saying it's not? We're, we're saying that we, we uh, met the performance standards to the maximum extent practical under the more stringent guidelines. Which are the new development guidelines? 10.584 is for new development in the riverfront area. The only thing that's degraded. But, the, but we, we think they come under five. They definitely come under five. I talked to DEP about that. that it's redevelopment. You, you took something that was previously yeah. developed and you're redeveloping it. Yeah, you're, not mean, put, you're not starting from we scratch. Have a lot, There's we have something a lot of there. disagreement here, sir. And well, I, I well, think that. Uh, re redevelopment you know, means like the active process of redeveloping, especially renovation of a blighted area. And uh, I think you could successfully call that a blighted area. With right, we're, we're re and, 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 and you're telling us that it that it, it's uh, it's uh, it's got to got to happen fairly soon because you're you're concerned. You showed us a picture of a train falling through, and uh, all kinds of calamity. So no, you no, you no. have concerns. No, so no. Uh, I, that's a redevelopment. The uh, what we're asking for is uh, like I said, they, they do the six per year. Mm -hmm. This is uh, going. Our intention is to put this out to bid to a contractor for the month of August, sure. so that it gets done either in, in fall of this year or the spring. I think you got to go back to the drawing board, sir. Right? And uh, for the re we went through the redevelopment standards here. So, um, so the first one for the standard that we have to meet is a talks about over uh, basically an improvement over existing conditions of the capacity of the riverfront area to protect the interests. And um, so the culvert replacement project has been proposed to locate to improve the existing conditions of the culvert as this culvert system has been designated as failed to replace. I would disagree with that. Yeah, it's improvement of the resource area, it's the capacity of the resource yeah. area to function, it's, not it's, the... Excuse me, one second. What, 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 it's, it's quite evident that we're not going to have approve this. So what we should do is like we did with the last gentleman, you, you uh, give our concerns, give it to them, and then, and then they have to, because we, we're, we're very good. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're going to talk these guys into... Uh, well, what I'm saying about the natural, the improving the natural resources is we don't want the culvert to fail, because if we do, the reason why I showed you those pictures is we don't want any pollution to happen to the river. Not to, this too. to hit upon the last point that you just brought up about uh, improving those conditions, so that's where you come up with letter C under the redevelopment standards. Well, actually, when it jumps to um, uh, letter F. It says, when an applicant proposes restoration on site of degraded riverfront area, alteration may be allowed notwithstanding the criteria of 310 CMR 10.58 C, D, and E. So under 10.58 C, it says, within 200 feet riverfront area, proposed work should not be located closer to the river than existing conditions or 100 feet. So our project is we're located uh, with, within the 200 feet, but not closer to the river than existing conditions. So we meet that performance standards under redevelopment. Letter D, proposed work, including expansion of existing structures, shall be located outside the riverfront area or toward the riverfront area boundary and away from the river. And our proposed work is located toward the riverfront boundary and furthest away from the river, basically at, at the existing condition, at the existing location. So we meet letter D, that performance standard. Letter E, the area of the proposed work should not exceed the amount of degraded area, provided that the proposed work may alter up to 
if the degraded area is less than 10%. So in fact, if we're going to assume that the degraded area is the, the dials, the ties, the concrete, the rails, then we are replacing all those things in kind. We're disturbing 490 square, 490 square feet of riverfront, the greater riverfront area and replacing it at the same amount. So we meet letter E. So then in that case, regarding doing restoration or other improvements to that area, regarding letter F and G, once again it says when an applicant proposes restoration, uh, alteration may be allowed. So alteration may be allowed, notwithstanding the criteria of those C, D, and E. So because we meet performance standards in C, D, and E, uh, but it, does, it doesn't exempt you from A, which is improvement to the capacity of the resource area to function. I think, I think we're, we're, what we're stuck on, and, and you're trying to get, you're trying to talk us out of it, but I don't think it's going to happen, is we're, we're opposed to the reduction of the size. Well, the concern, at least, I'm not necessarily... Okay. Uh, Doug may not be opposed. Yeah. ...be opposed to the reduction in size. What you haven't done is demonstrated that there is no negative effect relative to the floodplain by reducing the size. It's not the volume of that culvert that's existing that I'm concerned about because given that size relative to the floodplain size, it's minute. It's the ability of that structure to allow water from the river to pass through to the upstream side for storage purposes. And if it can't pass it through, that means the elevation on the downstream side may be higher to force the water through. And that could have an adverse effect on the tracks and on, on, uh, on the downstream or the riverside portion. And down, there's been no analysis of that. Now, the anal an analysis of it may show that it's minuscule. You know, and I sense that that's what you believe. But, you know, there's nothing to show us that that's the case. You know, and as far as replacing this, the reason you're replacing it is because of the, uh, the tracks, you know, any potential damage to the tracks that if you ignore this and let it go on and on, you could have some problems. So I, I understand that so you're replacing these things because of these are old and they're worn out and they need replacement. I, I have no problems with that. And as far as what you're doing here, I don't think it's going, anybody's going to stop you from doing it uh, or stop the railroad company from doing it because that's normal maintenance. And I think I understand that. The question I think has been raised is, does it have an effect on the floodplain? Well, with and the, and the, that the, hasn't been, you know, the, that hasn't been answered yet. And they, they're not. They're not exempt from letter A. Whatever. Some of these regulations I just assume throw out. There. Well, the, the, <laughs> this is the regulation that you should should appreciate, and and this is the regulation that we. An improvement over existing yeah. conditions of the capacity of the riverfront area to protect the interests identified. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's what so we're well, getting at. That's what you purposes here. What would you say would be? Well, uh, it, in my in my opinion, the project as proposed inhibits the floodplain's ability to function as it has in the past. Since since there, those cattle crossings. Because it's restricting the flow of flood waters and potential flood waters uh, across beneath the tracks, and it also restricts uh, wildlife migration underneath underneath the tracks. Uh, speaking about wildlife migration, so I, I think those are two objections. I think the project needs to overcome. In, in order to get approval. Now, that's just my opinion. Well, as, far, as far as the volume goes, the volume issue, the first one that you mentioned, that, you know, in a proper analysis of, of the floodplain could answer that. And my sense is the floodplain may be so huge that this is a minute aspect of it, and it does have no real negative effect. As far as the passage, we don't know, passage, we don't, we don't know we don't because know. they haven't answered the we question. We also don't exactly. know how many of these we, exist. And, then, then the other question as far as wildlife being able to go through, 
yeah, certainly uh, what's there now is easier for wildlife to pass through than uh, what is necessarily well, proposed. But, uh, about uh, uh, so as you saw and I described and showed you in the pictures, on the upgrading side of this, we have a fence that was put in by the Lawrence Sanitary District there, restricts anything going up the hill, but even more of a concern, the, the not concern, but where Lawrence put in the uh, store stilling base in there, so we have a four foot high concrete wall. So anything that may want to head from the river, 100 feet plus, up towards through that vegetation that you saw there, into the culvert, uh, would be stopped when I got through the culvert. The, the, there were many critters that a four foot concrete wall means nothing to. Right. And many, so, many, many critters. And that's where. And, uh, and it's our opinion that they're likely using that, that cattle uh, uh, crossing. Yeah, I, I would just suggest that you, you to over, overcome these objections um, in, in writing with, with analysis uh, of the floodplain. But, you know, floodplain analysis is important. That that would be my position. Hundred percent. If you make the whole small, yes. But you see, see, we're looking at the the problem is, and and I don't know if he can overcome it. The problem is, we're looking at two. That's what's in front of us right now. But if you take the length of the river in this area, there could be a lot of these things out there. You're only talking about two right here, right now. If you start knocking them off or reducing them one at a time, the cumulative effect you say is de minimis now, but it won't be de minimis. Um, it, it's, it's, like, it's, like the, it's like the Stormwater uh, Act that says, well, you don't have to provide stormwater data for one house, but if you put up 50 houses or well, more than four houses, I'm sorry, you have to. But we all know that that's just, that's just a, an out, that every, every, everything affects the stormwater, every, everything. And um, you, you're talking about reducing by 50 percent to two uh, giant, uh, the full-size culverts. They're what six feet and some change. And you want you want to reduce that by half. Uh, right now, absent some some real solid information to convince us that the contrary, we're not in favor of that. We're not hearing anything. To, to it it doesn't us. doesn't meet the standards that we are required to hold you to. And touching upon uh, one concern for the deer that um, we observed that was dead near the tracks. Um, they don't know about the deer. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, we oh, heard about. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we, we heard about there was a dead deer. They probably got hit by a train. So, uh, but uh, the deer so use the, the area. Right. So the deer use the area, and, and there's plenty of them over there. But they're not using the culverts. You can't say that. You well, absolutely can't say that. You, I mean, that's see, that's the kind of stuff but, you're losing credibility with me when you're well, saying they me, don't use it. Well, let me, let me tell you, you don't know that they don't use it. Let me tell you why. I'm Because the kids in there with the spray cans, you think? Uh, no, they would. They would shoot the deer. But the, uh, according to this, this federal uh, site that I went on, it says uh, looking at under, types of underpasses and what types of mammals might, might go through there. So underpasses with a minimum dimensions of 20 feet span or a 10 feet span uh, with an 8 foot rise or a 10 foot span with a 10 foot rise, deer can use, according to this website. It says unregulated use structures in approximate proportion to their size, which is deer can use smaller structures, although um, these types of large mammals that require structures of a minimum size to pass it. So, Certain an animals will look at a, a structure, and you can see many of these online as far as specifically deer structures or even overpasses for animals to pass in more wildlife areas. So based on this resource, they're suggesting that this culvert being only five, five, four feet wide and five feet, six feet tall, a deer wouldn't find that to be something they'd want to go through. Okay. Um, well, look. All right. So, um, well, you know, we'll certainly, you don't want us to close an issue tonight, do you? Because if you, I think you'd be a fool if you if you ask us to close an issue. So, um, you should be coming back to us because if we close an issue, you're not going to like the decision. <laughs> I'm not saying we're going to deny it, but you, know, you might not like what we condition. So, what's it going to be? because we're really running out of time here. We have other applicants behind you. We're not going to spend the night on this. This will not be what we spend the night on, so. Based on your suggestion, uh, we'd love to come back and see it. Uh, we'd love to have you back. Motion to continue. So moved. Second. All right. All right. What's the, oh, the next meeting is 18, I think.
can can you communicate with Jen between now sure. and, and the next your next appearance so that you can perhaps help us with some of the things that we're struggling with here? I will communicate with Jen. Please, thank Great. you. Thank you. We, we appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Ms. Jen, so right. eight ten. Next one is uh, 242-1639 modification request for monthly utility. Which one is it, Mr. 242-1639. Like completely out of paper. No, this is um, this is Bacon Joy. Willow Street. Oh, this is Willow Street. So we this had is Mr. Moore, huh? who just moved offices. Got that notification today. He did what? They moved offices. Wow. Let's Big stuff, uh, John Moore. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Should anybody else pick up a lot of our time? Don't want to go to the effort. I don't think this is a major button. I just give a narrative. Let's run through it quickly. John, yes. you the, 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 I'm going to give you the word of the day. Less is more. Okay. What can you do with that? <laughs> Uh, as usual, good evening for the record, John Moore from the Moore and Cameron Group. We're here tonight representing Muffin Realty Trust for a minor modification request. About a year ago, uh, your commission issued an order of conditions for the a proposed addition for this property, which included stormwater management and a parking area. What you see in blue is the two wetland resource areas. Willow Street is out here, existing building, proposed addition. What we're here for you tonight after you issued the order of conditions, Bacon Joy had uh, an opportunity to buy 160 flagship, which is right around the corner. In doing so, it modified the proposed use of the addition. So they went back, reevaluated the addition, came up with some uh, uh, proposed changes in use and proposed changes in the configuration of the building. Uh, the back left corner, as you would, of the proposed addition, we had some dumpsters in this location. Uh, before I go any further, what you see in yellow is the 100-foot buffer from the wetlands. So they had a dumpster enclosure here. We're proposing to move that dumpster enclosure over here, which is outside the buffer, close off this location, add it as part of the addition. It gives us about another 700 square feet of addition. Doesn't add any additional impervious area, won't change the drainage calculations in any way. Uh, the other uh, item that we're doing, we're doing some work outside the buffer. It doesn't have anything to do with the commission. We originally had a ramp at the back of the building. We're actually proposing to remove that ramp, replace it with a landing and stairs and a walkway. Uh, by doing so, we're removing about 670 square feet of impervious surface that was originally approved within the buffer. That area will now be landscaped. So the overall effect for work within the buffer zone is we're actually reducing the amount of impervious surface in the buffer by 670 square feet. We're not changing any of the drainage. So the proposed changes should actually have a net uh, better impact or a less impact on the resource area than what was previously approved. Jack, any questions? Uh, the, the new dumpster location Yes. Um, is that outside the 100 foot? Yep, yes, it's it right is. here. 100 foot buffer is right I, here. I have no other questions. No, no questions, sir. No I questions. Move. Motion? Uh, I move that we uh, approve the minor modification with the revisions uh, to be reflected in the as built plan. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Judge. So next uh, is Farm. 54 Tucker Farm. 242, 242. Oh wow, didn't even notice that. Um, 1984. So this house was not within the buffer zone, um, and we do have an as-built for it based on the septic plan. I did go out and visit, didn't see any concerns, wetlands across the street. She recommends PCOC. Any questions yet? Sounds administrative to me. Yeah. No questions. No questions. Motion. I move that we uh, grant the, the uh, PCOC for uh, 54 Tucker Farm Road, Lot 15. Second. Seven. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Hope we have to change it. Thank you. Sorry you had to uh, <laughs> endure <sit> that. And we went with 
or don't do. This is why we're the highest rated show in town. I just want you to know, okay? We earn those ratings. 1431 CLC request for zero pond, a one pond street. Zero pond is now one pond. Okay, so it's not one. It used to be zero, right? It did. They wouldn't let me have that at the street address. <laughs> really? I asked. I was confused. I think that's a shame. You should have. I, I thought zero would have been great. I thought yeah. so. I, I agree with you. Let me have not that many people have zero. I me. So. I'd appeal. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. So uh, if you recall, this uh, this is the one that is quite the grading challenge to get in the driveway. Um, Here's the photos. I was out and reviewed the site a few weeks ago. I didn't realize how long ago it was, but it was before the 4th of July. Yeah. It seems like just yesterday. But um, the site looks great. The wall yeah. came out great. Um, they did eliminate a wall somewhere near the garage. Yeah, you can see uh, on the asphalt, it doesn't show up so clear on the, um, on the screen there, but there's a, there is a, it sort of looks like a small structure right above where it says cave to gravel. In the, in the so NOI application, there. that was shown as a seven foot cut with a retaining wall. And when we got the conditions on the ground, we had about a three foot difference in elevation, so we felt that we didn't need that seven foot retaining wall. Uh, that allowed us to uh, not only eliminate the wall, but there was a drain shown on the NOI application as well that would have tied to a draining manhole. So we, we eliminated some of those structures. Uh, if you notice differences between the NOI and the asphalt. Uh, we retained the catch basin that was in the application, but moved its location out uh, where you see it on the asphalt. So we ended up with a little less building, which was a blessing. And and then, the only other issue I just want to point out is the garage footprint is there, but the, it is not the framing has not been done. So. <coughs> They would just like an assurance that when they go to do the framing, but you'll the be foot, the footage in the front. Every, the car everything's there. Correct. Yeah. I drive by there all the time, so I know. Right. The so they'll just at some point be building up, but I don't think that requires anything from us no, at this point. The foundations there. And we would sign off on your building permit okay. when you go to do it. So. Great. Yeah, that was what we were hoping. Mm -hmm. Jack. Yeah, I have no questions. All set. Okay. All set. You guys did a nice job there. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a long, long grueling process. I'm okay. glad that it looks good. Yeah, it does. I move, I move that we issue a COC for one, one Pond Street as requested. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Do I need to do anything? Nope. You'll get that in the mail, and we process the bond release. Probably take at least a month. Okay. Just given the. Well, I need to carry it to registries or any of that. Or yep. You record the um, certificate of compliance, and that clears your deed. Okay. For future. Great. Whatever you would do. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Next um, one is. Uh, CO uh, two for two sixteen sixty three COC request for a seventy Raleigh tab. So. This is uh, Walter's uh, septic system. This was the area of the brush dumping. I think per what we've required before, they kind of brought it back to, you know, maybe not every last bit of it out of there, but back to the, you know, there's no mound. It's kind of down to the existing material. Um, the wetland markers are installed, and uh, I think he's ready for the COC. Any questions, Jeff? How did he convince you to install a wetland marker? I just offered to get this done. Good old Walter. All right. No questions. Yeah. Good, good job, Jen. I have no questions. That, no questions. Motion. 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 Uh, I move that we issue the COC for 242-1663, 70 Raleigh Tavern Lane. Second. Second. Third. All those here, Seattle. Hi. Hi. Opposed? And that's the end. Next one is enforcement on uh, 242 1428. And we're condos. So, this is just, uh, we issued the enforcement order yesterday or the day before. Um, Heidi, in reviewing one of the recent monitoring reports, was concerned that the fill material was right up against the wetland line and were right up against the erosion controls in an area that was right up against the wetland line. <laughs> that clearly on the plan showed additional distance between the two, that just being the first of things she noticed. She then noticed a swale um, for an outlet was missing. Um, there were some stairs that had been reoriented, but 
it got to be enough that she was concerned that there has been more that we've missed that um, we should be concerned about. So we spoke to Lou. Lou authorized us to issue the enforcement order. That included a cease and desist, except for work on buildings that have already been foundations poured and so interior work or framing work or whatever. Um, the applicant then contacted me. I don't, until I emailed you the enforcement order, I don't think they've seen it. We did send it to email by email to Patrick Garner just so he would know because he was the one who kept calling us asking questions. Um, I think they'd like to talk to you about uh, slightly amending the enforcement order before you ratify it to allow some additional work. So I'll let them present that or you can ask questions about the enforcement order. It requires them to do an as-built plan overlaid on the proposed plan so we can begin to get a handle on where the discrepancies might be and it's between wetland flags because we know the first part of the project is in compliance. We ha have as built of all that and have confirmed so it's, it's just from um, I think it's H down to N. H and I. Just H and I. Yeah. My, my problem is like I said when this has been we've spent a lot of time on this project. We've done multiple site reviews, multiple meetings, and the whole thing, the whole time was this, and these guys were very cooperative, that everything was getting finished and as we moved along. Then there was some discrepancies, and we jumped over, we allowed you to, mm -hmm. to do the ones along 114. But we're getting to the final end, and we're getting into the corner where the postage stamp, and my concern uh, is that we're getting a little bit off the track, and this site doesn't have any room for any well known. This project's been I don't know, like ten years. I think it's been about ten years, hasn't it? Yeah. All of yeah. that. All, all of ten. All of yeah. that. Yeah, it's all and, of ten. And, and like I said, we've had a great working relationship. We've had several modern mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I it, my concern about and you guys can you guys can vote the way you want, but I just we get to the end and I, I just want the project when they finish is to walk away from it, give them one to be done. I don't want it have asphalt issues and drainage swells issues and stormwater management issues. So that's why every time Heidi or Chan come up with a question, I just issue a cease and desist. Now we've had several of those, so mm -hmm. until we get all on the same page. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys handle it, but because like I said, I, I just, enough is enough, so I just want to, uh, mm. that's my, my uh, well, be before they go, let me ask you, what, what, what do we want them to do in order to satisfy the CO? What, what are we asking them to do? Well, the, the project was phased, and, 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 and the newer phase, there was as mill supposed to be produced for every phase of the one one. I, I think we're missing one that I know of, and there's, there's a drainage, what drainage square, right, Jen? It's not even there. It's supposed right, to be Right. There's there. something outlets directly to a wet one that's not supposed to. Um, it was supposed to outlet into a grass swale. Okay. I don't even think there's room for the grass swale at, there at this there, point. There is room. Yeah. There is room. So uh, anyway, it's not there's, done. And yeah. there's stairs. We were very concise about the locations of, you know, you made them put all the stair locations and deck locations and all that stuff on the plan. And there have been some constructed that are not in conformance with what's on there. Um, so, so we need we need an as built, or, or, or we and need. Well, the biggest concern is that the fill material appears to be too close to the wetland in in some areas, and I don't know if that's a if the erosion control is in the wrong place, if the wetland line's in the wrong place. The surveying out there has been challenging at best, and look, it's hard to tell what's wrong. It, the, it, it could be very well that the wetland flags are in the wrong place at this point. I can't imagine that they are because we've been out there so many times to measure and remeasure. But it's clear as you get down close to 114, mm -hmm. when you look at the plans, there's a good amount of distance between where the erosion control and the limit of work is and where the wetland line is. But if you're out in the field, that fill material is right up to the wetland line. And I don't know why or what's wrong, but that was what sort of started Heidi's review is she noticed that particular thing and started backtracking to see where the problem was and then picked up on the pipe and All right, so but just so I can understand what have we asked them to do in this EO just in the EO as built this area that we're talking about okay um, 
oh, you know, an overlay and put it on top yep. of the yep. proposed plan so we can see what the differences are. And, yep. to, and to have whoever does that plan outline what, what they see as the differences. That's all we're asking for. That's all, well, that's a big, that's a big ask, but well, if it's, it's, if it's it, what we ask if for. It, is it what you need? That's what we ask for in the so what's the problem? enforcement order. I don't think there's any problem. No, there's we no issued, problem. We issued a cease and desist for additional work on the site. They're here to ask you about doing additional work on the site. That's right. Just to, to frame the, the, the situation, what we're talking about here with these photos one, two, and three in buildings F, H, and I, um, I recall there were four phases mm -hmm. in this project. These are pretty much complete. They're not a completed phase. That's a phase we are currently completing. That's why the as-built isn't done. Is this phase three? Correct. Phase three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you, and then the cease and desist, the, the, the discussion of that deals with J and K, those buildings. J and K are in phase four. Phase four. Yes. Right. And so, yeah, you're, you're just in the early phases of those. I see. Yes. One, uh, I think the K Foundation. Is K right Foundation, right yeah. That's yeah, it. those yeah. are in, right? K, right. Yeah, K's K in and P's in. Right. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make but sure. We allowed that. We did. <coughs> I remember the discussion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had to store it out at the and then work back. Right. So we, we kind of went off the track, but now the track is. Yeah, the, it, we might have been off track on phase three, and we want to just clear it up. Yeah. And, and I, I heard what you said, but and what Jen's saying is, is with respect to the EO, which is the subject, she wants an ASBIL done the way she described it on, on the overlay. Right, so, and I don't think they're here. No, no we're not here for that. We're, we're going to do the so ASBIL, and it, it should be ready for your next, yeah, it should be ready for your next meeting. So, oh, all right, so then let's let's cut to the chase here. What it, why, why are you here? We would like to have the uh, enforcement order lifted to the point where we can continue work on phase four because we have a foundation cellar hole that's opened up and we have removed the giant stockpiles that were there. Those have either been used up or moved and the only thing we have left on site is the new rock that we're pulling out of the cellar hole and some of the rock that was left for the front screen wall. So we would just like to be able to continue on with that work while we have the uh, as-built drawn and then we'll be back in on the 10th. And that, we'll, that, whatever you want done with that or whatever we need to do, we'll be more than happy to see, take that care. See, that sounds like that's actually the root of the problem here because they're saying they've got confusion as to what's taking place out there and they need the asbel to remove the confusion. And you're saying you want to continue the well, confusion going. No, no, no. The, the as-built, what we're missing, everything that was, is, Jen had discussed tonight is, ha, has to do with structures and where outlets are going to. But all the foundations have been as-builted. And those have been turned in. I heard something so K, about. K I heard something been? about an outlet. Yeah, K has every foundation we have put in has been as belted and turned I in. I heard something about an observation of a possible outlet that's in the wetland area that's not supposed to be. The right. outlet is the outlet is further 15 feet close in the, in the buffer. It's not in the wetland. It's just closer to the resource area. Well, so that, so that's a problem. It is a problem. So We're willing, that, and I so have that, no problem pulling it back. But see, this is what I'm saying. This is, I think. Another example of why she wants that as built right away. And we're getting it done as soon as we can. We already had Patrick Garner out there all day yesterday. He's already surveyed everything, and we're just waiting for the as built to be completed. I don't have an, an issue with additional site work. I would have an issue with pouring an additional foundation because if something proves to be off. Then we won't pour another foundation. I would just like to continue. Like if they're, if they're, yeah, but see, you're getting you're getting into the weeds now. Well, no, they're doing they're, ledge. They're they're excavating ledge. Like they they need to excavate that ledge regardless. But if, I don't want them to put in if the, the, let's say K's not in the right location or something's off with the well in line, and something's wrong. I don't want another foundation so, so in the ground. Is, but I don't is, think site work. This is kind of what I do for a living, and I'm going to make it okay. as clear as I can. If you're going to modify an EO to to allow something. Building in. That's what you better you better make it a line item, and make it a specific line item, and stop right there. If you make it a general, okay, you can remove ledge, or you can dig a hole, or you can do this, or you can do that. If you make anything general that's open to interpretation, you're gonna you're gonna get your hat broken. 
you better make it a line item and say, okay, line item, you are allowed to do A, and you are not allowed to do anything else. If you don't make it a line item, you're going to be out there running around screaming and yelling, I guarantee you. That's fine. I, but you need to you had a question in the building in. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying I don't, I don't think she you doesn't should pour want another, foundation. another foundation. I think site work, if you're excavating we're not, ledge or... We're not going to pour a foundation in 10 days anyway. Wow. Peter thinks he can pour a foundation, and she just said she doesn't want it. This is the problem. If, if no, I, I heard Jen loud and clear. Yeah, but I, 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 and I appreciate that. But I'm just saying, if anybody's entertaining modifying the EO or lifting the cease and desist, it has to be for an item specific and then stop. And that item specific better be clear, because if it's not clear, I see the confusion that's going to happen. How would you word the, what it is you want to continue to do on site? We would like to continue ex... No. In your vote, no. Okay. So, it, it's, you make your request. Make your request. Well, if we you, if you do, I don't want to upset anybody. If you're going to vote no on it, it's fine with me. We don't get upset, you know. We, we, honestly, <laughs> we don't get upset. Where because, am I? <laughs> because because at, the, at, the, at the end of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, we go home. Yeah, right? it's not. Yeah. I don't get upset over this. Yeah. Even if we say no to you, it's more yeah. likely you're the one. I would like upset. to continue on with the excavation of the foundation for N, and continue to remove the rock that we're trucking out right now. So I hear remove rock and continue excavation of the foundation for N, but no pouring of the foundation. All right. So that's the request. So right. let's talk about it. Uh, really yeah, and, and just just to add to that, I think you know it's it's reasonable to consider, you know, you know, lifting that part of the uh, the cease and desist if there are if there are no imminent um, violations. That they don't know. Right, but that's why I'm saying don't put anything in the ground. Don't put anything else concrete in the ground. They have. The issue is they have a site contractor who has to keep either working on the site or he's going to leave the site. If he leaves the site, then we're going to have a vacant site. Okay, listen. That's this is, you see what I'm talking about getting into the weeds? Either, either, either you want the as-built done before anything else happens or you don't. And, and if you do, you've got to just say that and, and not entertain any, any, any modification to okay. it. Well, it's not my job to convince you, but I, I don't have an issue with them excavating rock and digging a hole. I don't want anything permanent else permanent out there. I don't want any more fill. I don't want any more, you know. I agree. agree. That's all we are asking. You, you, you just said you don't want any more foundation because it might not be in the right place. If they dig a hole and it's in the wrong place. If they dig in a hole and it's in the wrong place, we can fill back in that hole. I don't have any issue with that. Yeah, if but they pour they, something uh, in it, then we have Are you drilling and blasting ledge? No. No, we can't blast there. We're hammering it. Hammering it. So your opinion is well, I, I, let I, the EO stand pending the receipt of... Yeah, I'm just trying to understand and, because... And, 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 and have some type of surveying to make sure that it is going on what's going on in that area where they're excavating. Before That's it. the last piece. That's the last piece. That's the last piece, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the last piece. Yeah. And so if it's wrong. How long is it going to take you to get the ASBIL done? The ASBIL will be done for your next meeting. We will submit on August 1st as required in the EO. And uh, that gives you time to get it ready for the meeting. But we, Do you have the hold up for P or no? P, the foundation's in. And they, okay. you have the so ASBIL for K and P. I guess N doesn't matter to me. It's because P's already, it's already in. in. Already yeah. in, yeah. Yeah. Right? So ends in the middle of there's no wetland here. If P's already in and something needs to be done, P's next to the wetland and it's already in. So digging a hole next to P. For but you N, said that in the series of excavation, I don't know. You said that there's well, there's dirt nest and uh, foams up against the wetland. Yeah, but that so that that's where we ask them to. Okay, retaining um, walls are not built yet. To do this, but this is in. These are in. So yeah, if there's this a problem, one this in. is in. They want to work in this area to excavate. No. One because of these discharges... It's not going to affect anything. anything. So, is, so, is there another one going here? No, I mean, if something's a, wrong, here it's going to show one of these is but it's not going to matter because plus, there's already a foundation here. Which is digging a lot. Here. Mm -hmm. And they're acknowledging that. So they're trying to dig in now. Correct. Why are you asking building in? Yeah, but what, you, but what are you asking? 
you want to just dig a hole. You Continue know? with the excavation, yeah. removal of the rock, and cleaning up the sites, but not but pouring any but permanent you're not, structure. You're also not going to install any forms. No, no, no. You're not going to put anything in the hole. If you're going to dig no. a hole, you're going to dig a hole, but you're not going to put forms in there. You're not going no. to do anything. No. Nope. And then remove rock. And remove the rock and continue to clean the site up. I don't know. I don't know. Could you point out for us which, which of these outfalls is, is 15 feet too close? I, do you want me it's, to come up? No, Jen can show us. Okay. It's, um, the outfall is here, but it's actually this wall. The, there's no retaining wall, right? That's why it's in a different location. No. We, they graded instead of putting the retaining wall. Yeah. So now the outfall's right to the well right. instead of to this. So that's going to change. Yeah, that's well, that, yeah. but that's what they're going to they're yeah. show. I, yeah. But that's all in place. There's nothing sure. they can <laughs> They may be able to alter something, but they, that's not where they're working anymore. Well, but, but if it's, that may be where, not where they're working, but if that's incorrect, that's got to be repaired. And Absolutely. They know yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. If you do not, no, no, we'll bring our story in. And if you don't approve, we'll, we'll do exactly what you're saying. Just the These buildings are not in. Those are It's just these two foundations right here, P, P3 and P2, right, and P1. Those are all in P's. P, P is, is in. P is in, yes. Yeah. All of P. So this so is the foundations are in, so. Yeah, this We're, is all they left. But is this anything messed up? The stairs and, and those Well, it could have an effect on where these are, but. Oh, I mean, it's the, 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 the well built and we just got to It's just closer to the well and than was previously proposed. They were all proposed up against the back of the buildings, and some of them have been constructed straight out instead. That, that seems minor. It can either be repaired or accepted as is. But, you know, again, it should all come together as one package to discuss. Well, no, we're asking. We're just trying to get a grasp of it because I'm learning the project as I'm sitting here. You, you, you guys, uh, you and Jen are more familiar with the project than I am. You, you're out there all the time. We got a couple of hours. <laughs> as, as I told the railroad yeah. guy and, 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 and Mr. Moore and less is more, and that goes for this one too. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I don't, I, I, to me, I don't, I don't think two weeks is going to break this project and it gives us more definite that, that uh, that it's going to be done. Um, if, if you guys are comfortable with letting them build, well, it's just an excavation. Well, they wanted they want to dig a hole. They they say that no forms will go in the hole. Right. And they just want to be able to dig the hole and remove what, dig the hole and do what? Remove rock that has been coming off, out of the hole. Off site. Yes, off site. So they want to, they want to dig a hole and to get the rock off site. There's there's understanding that there would be no forms or any type of construction in furtherance of a of a of a pour. Now, the, along 114 with P and M and, and was it M? M? Yes. And then, and Now, it's, I know we talked, because I said last time I was there, there was a ton of rock there. Yep. So you going to break it up. That's what yep, we that's what we're doing. We're hammering it now and trucking it out, and then some of the smaller rock we're keeping for yeah, the screen wall. So you are going to put the, the uh, stall walls that are brick wall? Correct. Yes. Is, uh, is that is that area up the sub right now? Yes, it is. It's all done. It's all well, done. it's done behind P, but not behind N. The area is so tight, we've excavated N out now, so you can't bring that area up to grade until you get the foundation in. But behind P, it is. Behind P, the front and back is all rough graded. So you're just looking for M? Uh, N. 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 Yeah, it and it's half dug now. We just want to continue on with with excavating the hole, Just hammering the rock, and removing but not, rock. But not M. No, not no, M. Not M. Just no. M. Just M. I, I think what Lou's concerned about is that is that we've got discrepancies up here and maybe more. Uh -huh. We don't have the asphalt, and okay. we will, you know, in, in a short amount of time. Agreed. And you're asking for some cooperation from us to, you know, to keep the project moving and get yes. it stable, as, which yes. is our best interest, your best interest, yes. all that, okay? But I think it might be reasonable that, um, you know, we, we see three potential discrepancies and there, and there may be more. Once those are, are, you know, defined and acknowledged by the comparison of as-built, mm -hmm. that 
that the enforcement order that comes to correct those mm -hmm. have you know pretty strict date certains on that mm -hmm. on, on those particular elements that need to be changed and corrected and and fines commencing after that mm -hmm. you know if they're, if they're if they're not met by the prescribed timetable mm -hmm. there's no problem so with it's that. so it means it means that I think Lou's concern is that there's bad stuff happening here because it wasn't constructed as designed, okay? Um, the longer that goes on, the more damage to the wetlands, and this is a small site, and it was a sensitive site, and there's probably still some sensitive areas on it. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to make that right ASAP. Agreed. So, uh, we will follow your timetable of August 5th, you'll have the ice belt, 10 days to decide. As soon as they told me you were off the site. What's that? As soon as they told me you were off the site, that's when I, who told you that? Yeah. Huh? I'm not off the site. Who, who told you that? Off the site. Somebody said that he wasn't working on the, on the site. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't keep track of it's Tim on a daily yeah. basis. But no, <laughs> I'm there most days. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you, you've been very cooperative, and we've been cooperative with you. You've been excellent with us, and I, and I appreciate uh, that. You really put your loss in doing this. I don't mean. I can only speak for me, but uh, I mean, I, I I always lean to want to help the applicant, but at the same time, I don't want to make it worse for us. Um, and I recognize that we need the the the, the as built. Um, as I said at the outset, if we give them a line item permission, one thing. If we give them one task they can do, it's going to be one task. We're going to say you are permitted to do this, yeah, and we're going to describe the task. Be specific about it. It's be specific, and then we're going to stop. It's not going to be a cat blast, and it's not going to be discretionary. It's going to be a task. So their request on the record is mm -hmm. they want to dig a hole mm -hmm. and Continue truck. Excavation of N. They want to ex excavate the hole, and then they want to truck the stuff off-site, and that's it, stop. Um, something like that I could live with. Okay. But we would name it specifically. I would name Nothing it goes in the hole. No forms, no nothing. Got it. And, and uh, no other work takes place. That's the work that's permitted. The Agreed. Interior and framing on oh, the carpentry work. That's, that's yeah. okay. We're not talking about carpentry right. work here. We're not. talking about site work. Right. Um, so, um, in my, my humble opinion would be okay, we, we, we'll give you permission to dig, dig the hole, period. Stop, truck it off. That's it. Nothing else uh, other than the interior work. And if you can do that and, and, and not come back to us with an oops, mm -hmm. gee, you know, Joe didn't get the word because an oops is the worst thing you can ever bring to me personally. Mm -hmm. so I the, hate those. The motion would be to... <laughs> those I get upset about. To ratify the enforcement order, um, amending it to, to state that they can do that one specific excavation and, and, and of N and removal of rock ex with excavation, no forms Excavation of N right, removal and removal of, of the debris from it. Done. And Stop. No, no additional construction. And, 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 the, and the ash belt that they're going to produce in two weeks is going to reflect that. That, that, it's going that to That's all in there already. It's already written to, to state. You can see it. No, no. Come, so the day come the next meeting, that, With, that stuff will be done. Right. Not that we, oh, we, oh, we, we change this because of that, and, and that doesn't work that way. Well, if... There's if no ability to change built, it. It's an as built between sets of wetlands. If the flags, if the as built reveals overlaid on on, on the, the proposed plan, we'll address plan. it then. Right. We'll address it at that time. If the as built shows us that, hey, there's been some mistakes made, we'll address the mistakes at that time. But right. uh, between now and then, you know, we're saying it sounds like we're saying you can dig a hole and take the debris off site. But then we'll be back. If, to me, if, the, if that stuff isn't rectified by the next meeting. The it can't be rectified. Be there, it's, it can't be rectified by the next meeting. They're going to come with the plan. But it's going to be identified. What's wrong, identifying what's wrong. And then we have a new schedule. I agree. I agree with you. Hmm. I you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real tightrope you're walking here, Peter, though, you know? Because when you make, when, when, you, when you give us your, 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 your word on something, we're going to, very Mr. Garner has spent two full days on the site already. Uh -huh. I, my, I believe all the field work is done. Now he has to plot it and show it two different colors. We're always on a tightrope. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, you're working on a shoebox. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. okay. All right. Well, so, yeah, so I mean, are we it, modifying? It's also possible if you, if he gets done with the as built to his work, he's got it all plotted up, get it into us as soon as possible. General have it as soon as Rather I have two it. two weeks, but as soon as possible so I that you can it's look at him. August and then if there's right, an issue. Yeah. Date on the enforcement so we, we can get it in your packets for the next meeting. So you'll have it and I'll have it in time to review it before the next meeting. Okay. So, um, so what do you Motion mean? Motion to <clears throat> approve the enforcement order with the amendment to allow excavation of N and removal of rock, but no forms or pouring of foundation. Removal of rock from N. Correct. It's got to say that. Mm -hmm. right? Like I said, you, it's got to say it. Don't just say removal well, of rock. They're excavating the foundation hole for buildings and. Yeah, I, I get it. Only. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm and saying. You I would add, I would venture to add that if the as builds that come back in, that Jen reviews, if for some reason she says, oh, wait a minute, we got an issue, that she's got the authority to issue a cease and desist immediately at that point. Agreed. For, do, for, for anything you're doing on end, if you uh, should be still working on it. I didn't follow that. Huh? What, what he said was, it's what she, she already has. What he said was, it's what you already know. Okay, if she, if and she, I agree. If she, if she discovers <laughs> a new a new mistake, yeah. If when you give, oh, you're okay. gonna, you're gonna when you be, give me the as bill, you'll like, likely be the recipient of yet another cease and desist. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So we can catch up. Yeah. Right. Motion. Uh, not to be punitive, we just have to catch up. Yep. Motion to that effect. So I <laughs> need to state it again. I've got I, it. I've made I the guarantee motion. you I've got it. I've made the motion. Now Second. Motions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. All right. Good luck, gentlemen. So, Thanks. what I, I needed. So, Peter, what I sent you is going to be revised just with that language. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Good Thank night. you, guys. Good night. Next one is enforcement order on 146 slash 148 Main Street. Just an update that um, went to court on Thursday and Monday. We received the magistrate's decision awarding us $900 in fines to be paid by September 2nd. So that resolves this for now. Can I can I ask you real quick? Because I don't want to stay here any longer. But did did you give testimony at the hearing? I did. And uh, was the defendant there? Yes, giving. No, 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 just, just I don't want to, I don't want to say any, I don't want anything more than what we're asking. Okay. So you both, all parties were present, you gave testimony. Yes. And the clerk's decision was based upon a full hearing. Correct. Thank you, that's all I need to know. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. job, thank you. Great job, is right. Any motion? Um, what do you want? No sir? motion. It's no, done. No motion. Just, that was the update. Just, um, I, I think we can take this off the agenda until further. Yeah, that's satisfied. That that's what we consider an, a satisfied or or freezes or something. So. When you when you go to okay. litigation and you prevail, that's called satisfaction. Uh, no, court and satisfaction. <laughs> Do you want to postpone election offices till we have more people? Or we? I don't care. What do you guys want to know? Um, I'll make it easy for you. I'm going to nominate you to be reelected as chairman. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Anybody want to be vice chair? Al? Yeah, you just want to be the vice chair. I'll, I'll, I'm running for re-election. <laughs> so, well, does anyone else wish to run as vice chair? Oh, I, I don't know. Is there anybody else that wants to be? Anyone? I was going to make a motion that Al be vice chair. Okay. We have a motion. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Sure. I mean, you don't know of anybody else. No, I, I know Sean him. doesn't no. want it. Joe, Joe is yeah, minimally participating, and Joe, Deb has never. Deb serves on. Joe, as Joe's here under duress. Yeah. And, 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 and duress. Yeah, Joe is here under duress, and but Deb he, has already made it clear she wants nothing to do with being an, an officer. All right. So motion to adjourn. So move. Segundo. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed.